Happy New Year's Eve, Sun Valley Church. Uh, we hope that today is full of joy and hope as you look back to 2019 and reflect on how God has been faithful to you and uh, look forward to 2020 and, and hope and anticipation for what that what that brings. And you're probably wondering why I'm sitting in a room with the elders, and there's a good explanation for that. Um, I don't know about you, but uh, maybe you wonder what, what they discuss sometimes, maybe what they think of the year, what they thought of 2019, and what they look forward to in 2020. So we wanted to bring them all together in this room and hear their thoughts as they reflect uh, on the year. So that's why they're here. And thank you guys for, uh, for being here. And uh, let's get started, if that's okay. All right, all right, let's do it. All right, so first question. What are some highlights for you guys um, from 2019? Well, we need to start with, we got two new elders in the room. That's, is that a highlight or is that just well, starting? Yes. Okay. Would, would you call it something else? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> no, that's a highlight, but okay. I mean, they're new elders, Josh and Rick. It's good to have them on board and mm -hmm. thankful they're here. Yeah, this is our first elder meeting. This is, this this is, is your, your first, first elder, elder meeting. Yeah. We don't do this all the time. Oh, just oh okay. So you know. yeah. <laughs> we don't have snacks. <laughs> oh. Or people am, I, am I supposed to be taking minutes? Yes, did you not bring your... <laughs> no, so I think that's a highlight. I think, you know, we've been, how long we've been talking about the necessity of adding elders and talking to, well, Rick's known it for 10 years. This has been the goal. I've been talking to Josh for at least that long mm -hmm. about that eventual reality. And to have it finally happen, I mean, both at the same time, it's a great blessing. Uh, not just for our <clears throat> shepherding purposes, but for the benefit of the entire body, having two more guys that can share the ministry. And I think that's a highlight. We should be, re I mean, and we did. We've, we've praised God for that publicly. We've commissioned them last Sunday. Um, well, we're filming this in the wrong day, but a few Sundays back, we... <laughs> We commissioned them, and that was a time of rejoicing, I think, for our, our church family. And mm -hmm. um, of course, the annual meeting was real positive, and I'm always thankful for the annual meeting mm -hmm. and how there seems to be a real spirit of unity there and um, anticipation for what God's doing. And um, this was the highlight for me those two guys coming on board mm -hmm. of that meeting. Um, so, and then Josh Ryan was part mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it's a blessing seeing what God's doing in Othello with he and Sarah. It's just a lot of good things happening. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing about Josh Ryan as well. Just the kind of the the giving him, you know, kind of we've sent him, mm -hmm. uh, but now kind of giving him that ability to go and to be the elder who's going to be planting a church, and, yeah. you know, Lord willing and, and doing that work. So I was pretty excited about that as well. And the potential, you know, that you see up there, and of course he sees it every day. But when you when you go up there and talk to him, I had a chance to go up there last summer with uh, the team that I think Rick took up there for the the, the kids. Uh, that was it's fun, you know, getting into Josh's head and talking to him about all the stuff he's thinking about. He's got a hundred things going on in his mind and what he wants to do, and mm -hmm. it's just exciting stuff. I think I think just dovetailing into that, and it's a highlight every year is to see we have more guys in leadership areas that mm -hmm. we haven't led before. Mm -hmm. So well, we have more small groups, yeah, right? More small groups. We got a uh, new deacon, right? Yep, Levi. Levi McElroy. Mm -hmm. um, we've got uh, new small group leaders, which is always good to see. It's always good to see men coming up through the church, through the ranks of the church that God's calling to mm -hmm. to lead. Mm -hmm. That's always a cool thing to see, and you always wonder next year who's going to be, you know, next. Yeah. Next year. Well, we're starting a leadership course here in a couple months. Dennis and I are going to be working on that. Well, we're working on it now. He's doing the load of it, but um, we're going to be leading that through some leading some guys through that, and um, that's something you worked on, Rich worked on, um, and so we're going to do that. That's always an exciting time. Yeah. Looking around the room, those new leaders. And, yeah. Seeing, I can see that guy in a couple of years just, you know, going, and it's kind of fun. Yeah. 
Dan, Dennis, what's some some highlights from, from <coughs> small group ministry that you've seen? Well, Andy mentioned we started two new groups in the fall this year in September, and both those groups are doing really, really well. They actually, the one group is full, yeah. and the other group is pretty close, so that's that's really good. Um, the other aspect of small group ministry, I just one of the things I really enjoyed this last year, one of the highlights for me as I go from group to group to group, is just to see the people of Sun Valley Church who are really humble before God and just really love Christ. And I just, I really enjoy the prayer times as I grow from group to group to group to hear people pray. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that's been one of the highlights of the opportunity to be in kind of involved in that ministry where I get to go to different groups. So I've got a lot of people that love the Lord in our church and that's really a good thing. And this is your second go around in that position of directorship, right? Yes. But this year was, it began in January for you? Right. Of last year, of this, this career. Yes. Yeah. I think that was a highlight too. You know, moving you from where you were to into your current position, moving right from where he was to his current position of, you know, family ministries and missions, and then bringing Dennis in, kind of filling out that that whole picture um, after Andy left the year before that, and so it's been a, a lot of blessings that we've seen come. Yeah. Yeah. So over this last year, we've uh, we've made our way through. The book of James, and uh, we've made our way now through the second, third, yeah, almost. We're, we're through the middle third. Middle third of, mm -hmm. of Psalm 119. What's well, maybe some things that you guys seen throughout those studies that has uh, been an encouragement uh, to you guys? 2019 was <coughs> in, in many ways more of an excruciating year for Sun Valley Church than most years that I can remember, um, and I mean that on the individual family level, um, a number of families uh, really experienced tremendous trial and hardship. And in talking with them, um, the connection with their trials to the realities of God's faithfulness and His sustaining grace um, that are really central to Psalm 119, uh, that was not lost on them. And so they, they saw what has been preached and focused on in our corporate worship uh, borne out in their lives even though they would not have chosen those circumstances if they had to I mean I guarantee and none of them went into 2019 saying here's what I hope for the year um, but seeing their like Dennis said their love for Christ in their humility really just and to see the church come around them and in in a lot of these things um, <laughs> most of our church maybe doesn't even know about because it just was happening just in the quietness of people's lives but um, from where I was sitting I, I got to see that happen in in a way that many people didn't and that was really uh, something that was precious yeah I'd say the just the application of the book of James mm -hmm. and working through uh, what it is to you know, rejoice in the midst of trials. No, well, you're one of those families he's talking yep, about. Yep, we sure are. And I noticed you <laughs> quoted James a little bit in your last couple emails. I did, yeah. I was just thinking about that. Um, yeah, you know, the Lord is uh, always good and has been faithful throughout. But it did seem like as we started preaching through, or you started preaching through the book of James, that uh, it wasn't just my family, but in our small group it was just like this is a, applicable here and here and here and here and here and it was just kind of like stop preaching on James <laughs> or just like did, did James like, bring that on I, you know it, 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 it may have I don't know but it, it was so yeah so it was very very helpful and good um, to be able to just take scripture and go like this is where I can apply this like right now tonight tomorrow you know as I go to wake up, you know, the next day, um, knowing that it's, it is, it's doing something and that's, and that gives us hope. And so that's, uh, I think it was, I think it's really good that our body moved into James and, and how James fits back into Psalm 119, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so. I was going to say, you know, if the current text of Psalm 119 doesn't address your current crisis or mm -hmm. situation, wait a couple verses. 
right? You know, it's kind of how it's all one that team works. You know, it's got that circular movement through the trials of life and the, you know, mm -hmm. experiences of life that it covers. And it, it circles back around always to something that is applicable to your own mm -hmm. Christian experience. Yeah. So, like, you know, like you with April, you know, this past year, I thought of you a few times and preparing, you know, and thinking back over things we've covered, all that you guys have gone through. Yeah. Just, in, just in this room, you know, you said a few families, you know, you go around the room, yeah. and it's just it, here. It's been a good reminder for me when I want to look for um, solace or contentment and other things. And so, you know, it could be, well, you know, the world, the world system to find happiness in Netflix or psychology or something else, but how we're being held up by the word and that it's our light and our lamp. Um, so that's been good to hear faithfully taught. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a hard year, but it's been a good year. It's been a good year where God has faithfully watched over us as a church. Um, but John, you, you're starting a new book in January. Can you, uh, can you tell us what book you're starting and, and why you chose this book? Well, we're not, you know, you just said we're not completely through Psalm 119. We've, we're finishing the middle third now, and our goal, you know, ultimately is to finish Psalm 119. Before 2025, right? That's the goal. Okay. And, uh, but currently, uh, we're going to take a break again and then head into, hopefully in January, um, Lord willing, into Philippians. And uh, pick up that prison epistle and learn from it and see what... God will teach us as a church. I'm, I've got some ideas. I've been studying it for a while now, just preparing for this, okay. and uh, I'm excited about it. Is there any particular reason why why you chose Philippians? Yeah, um, I, when when you asked me about that earlier, I was thinking about it and thinking about the the different books we've studied, you know, as a church, and how we, you know, early on we we studied Romans, which is a really good. Uh, exposition explanation of the gospel and which is you know fundamental for any new church and we studied that real early in our church life which was important and then we went to the book of John and, and looked closely at the life of Christ and who Jesus is and the importance of understanding that you know thoroughly as a Christian and then I think we went into Genesis um, and looked at the gospel as it's revealed in Genesis which is intriguing just to consider. Um, from Genesis we went to Hebrews, I think, where we looked at the supremacy of Christ in all things. Kind of like trying to compare Christ to whatever else might be in competition with him in our lives. And I think Hebrews did a good job at establishing the supremacy of Christ for us. And then Psalm 119, James, you know, very related, as Josh said, and uh, now into Philippians. I, I don't want to give away too much because I want people to come, but um, there's there's a, a, a grand plan in God's mind that includes using people uh, for his kingdom, for his glory, and for our good, and it all comes together in context of the gospel, and really the theme of Philippians is that partnership with God in the gospel going into the world, starting in your family, going into neighborhoods that you live in, schools, you know, places of business. Um, how do me and the gospel fit together for Yakima? That's what Philippians is going to, I'm praying, will yeah. reveal to us. And so I, I'm excited about it. A lot of good stuff in there. So uh, over over the sermon series that John has has preached through, how have you seen how have you seen people in our church grow more like in the in the Christ likeness? If that makes sense, I think it makes sense. Through through, through all through, the series, yeah, through through these different series, through these different avenues <coughs> in which which John is you know applying. How is how is how are people growing? Well, I think going through Romans is a good picture of the sovereignty of God, mm -hmm. 
right? And so that's so foundational for so many other things. So we have to put God in his place. We have to put God on his throne and he is sovereign over all things. And so that sets a foundation to how we've looked at everything since, okay? So God is sovereign um, and so let's look at who Christ is, right? And we do that as going through John and, and going through Hebrews. We do that. And, and now we're, it seems like we're picking up as we're reminded how scripture um, determines our worldview, reminds us of all those things. Now we're starting to go through these letters that is helping people see, okay, so how are we to be Christ-like now? And it's, it's been a really neat mm -hmm. kind of progression through this mm -hmm. to see, and it's, it's on, on people's minds. You know, now that I know the sovereignty of God, now that I know how I'm saved and who Christ is, what are we supposed to do? And these letters are just great at showing us, yeah, this is what Christ and, like And now that says. I've been convinced that Jesus is better than all these other things right. that may have tempted me, yeah. uh, not that they still don't, but now that I know that, now what? And so I see people are really thinking about, so who is, in on, who is Jesus to us? And, and how am I supposed, what does Christ likeness really look like and you hear it in conversations in small groups you hear it in fellowship when people are talking uh, so I, I I think overall that's been the progression I think Dennis has a good a good view on that a more kind of <clears throat> comprehensive view than most of us simply because you you go to all these different groups and you hear him praying you hear him discussing and that's a good cross-section of our entire church mm -hmm. you know different people at different levels of spiritual growth and you know, you said earlier that you've really been impacted personally by just listening to them pray. Yeah. And that comes from, you know, <coughs> scripture saturation. Right. You know, that humility and that love for Christ. And um, that's, that's all, that's very encouraging to hear and right. for you to see. Right. In all of our groups, the people are very excited about uh, being in the Word of God. <coughs> They're engaged in what the sermon was about. They're engaged in the Word. Um, they're just excited that that's the foundation of what we believe. So, yeah, it's a great opportunity to visit groups. Now, for, for the, those who have been here since the church began, I'm sure you can look out among the congregation and just see how, how God has been working in such and such life or how that person has, has grown and um, how he's working in their lives. And I'm sure that's an encouragement for you guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as, as we reflect on this last year, how about personally for you guys? What is, what is one passage or one theme uh, in, your, in your life that has been foundational for you over this last year? Rick, how about you? What's, what's one, <laughs> what's uh, maybe one passage, one theme that's stood out to you? <laughs> You mean from the sermon series that we've been going through or just personal study? Just personal study. Personal study. Um, so something we've been hitting on in our small group um, recently, and our small group really took a different, uh, a little bit of a different form after the open enrollment closed. And it's been a really uh, beautiful thing for our group to really uh, get more deep into fellowship. And one of the things that has emerged um, as central for us um, as we're talking with each other about what's going on in our lives is, is the promise of 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24 that uh, the God of peace himself will sanctify you completely. Mm -hmm. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless. Um, he who calls you is faithful and he will surely do it. Um, and so that I think for me has been uh, a continual uh, thing that I go back to because as I, as, uh, as I experience parts of my own heart that I would rather not be a reality, but they are, mm -hmm. and I don't know how to change that. Um, that's my hope, mm -hmm. uh, is that the reason that those things won't take the day is because he is faithful mm -hmm. and he will do it. And so, or as, as one of our small group members says, he will do it. <laughs> that's how he says it. And so that's kind of our slogan for our small group. <laughs> he will do it yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, with an oomph. Yeah. That's one of my favorite benedictions that we go through. Yeah, mm -hmm. so hopeful. Yeah, it is. Gives you a lot of confidence, you know, going forward. 
especially in dark places. What else is there? Is there any other passages that have been encouraging for you throughout this? Well, when I was thinking about this, I tried to put our Christmas letter, but I got mixed. Was that was First Peter five seven? Cast, slide on here. <laughs> casting all your anxieties on Him because He cares for you. An emphasis on all, all your anxieties mm -hmm. on Him, and how I feel like you know putting some of them, you know, you know, but it's a challenge of casting all of them. And then um, often when Pastor John or Pastor Rick asks asks me to teach, it's more for my own spiritual growth than probably the people that I'm teaching. And so when I got to, to share in Colossians 3 and what we clothe ourselves with, and that was a challenge about mm -hmm. um, compassion and kindness and meekness and how am I doing that? Mm -hmm. So that was an area of growth with studying Colossians 3. Yeah, I camped on uh, Lamentations <laughs> 3. Um, and it just says, but this I call to mind and therefore I have hope the steadfast love of the Lord. <clears throat> never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They're new every morning. Uh, great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, and therefore I hope. That wasn't planned. <laughs> <clears throat> And he was pulling my leg hairs. Um, <laughs> woo! Yeah, so, yeah, that's, uh, hmm. you know, you hear that, that passage, <laughs> you hear that passage uh, used my whole life, and I never realized the context in which it was written. And it's like in the midst of the siege of Jerusalem when, like, life is horrific. <clears throat> and I just kind of realized, like, oh, like, right in the midst of this, you have hope. Why? Because you recall the things of God. So mm. that's been good um, for me to be able to, kind of like David was saying, reminding yourself, like you have to keep coming back to the word because that's that's going to feed you. And, and that is, that's, uh, yeah, so it's been uh, where I live. It probably makes it into my liturgy for small groups mm. uh, a lot. <laughs> you ask Jordan Rowland about that sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Well, what what are some things that you're looking forward to in 2020? Hmm. Uh, Philippians sounds pretty good. Yeah, yeah. And John, your favorite verse in there? Maybe. One There's of, a few good ones in there. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like being commanded to be happy. Yeah. Hmm. You know, that's a, a good one. Mm -hmm. I enjoy that. Um, to live as Christ, to die as gain, I'm trying to figure out what that means, mm -hmm. especially in our culture, in our society. Um, yeah, no, there's there's some wonderful <laughs> verses in there. Think on these things, you know. There's a four, seven, eight. There's a few one and others in there. There's a few. Mm -hmm. yeah. Humility. Mm -hmm. Christ-like humility. Prefer one another. Yeah. Um, that's going to be good. We're going to have group marriage counseling. I'm going to get to those two. Uh, so, no, there's a lot of good stuff there. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it also. I'm anxious for it. Yeah. 2020 also marks our 2020 vision. Can you uh, give us? An update on that, maybe maybe tell people a little bit about it. We have <laughs> new people in our church that may not have never heard never heard of the 2020 vision. Yeah, it is a catchy new thing. Very yeah. few people have said that before. <laughs> yeah, the 2020 vision. Um, now, back in 2015, the, this group of elders um, uh, were talking about how to meet the needs that we were facing as a church. Um, 2011, we moved into the building that we currently. Uh, meet in and it needed some updates and expansions and um, we had we're kind of at a crossroads um, in terms of ministry philosophy uh, we had talked about since our inception back in 2003 maybe even before we started how we want to be a church planning church we started talking about that I don't know if you guys remember that conversation but we talked about whether we wanted to do that or just kind of uh, 
you know, circle the wagons and, and focus more on missions and more of a global view than a local church planning view. We ended up there, if you recall, and in order to do that, we needed to expand our campus. Not necessarily square footage, but, you know, improving it for use. So the building that we have now was a result of that. And so in 2015, we determined that direction. 2016, we started raising funds. In 2020, I mean, in 2015, we presented the 2020 plan. 2016, we actually started raising funds for the building um, and raised sufficient enough funds to begin the building. And then in 2017, we finished our current building and um, and uh, part of that 2020 vision as we decided to go towards a more of a, a global perspective than a local perspective with our missionary emphasis versus church planting emphasis. Not that we would never plant, but uh, currently our focus is to maybe pour a little more of our, our finances and efforts into uh, foreign mission aspect. And so one of the things that we mentioned in the uh, 2020 vision was besides completing the construction of the new building that would accommodate our growing church population and ministry needs, we talked about um, trying to get four new missionary couples, um, supporting them at 25% of their need as the church paid off the building debt. And as I think most of us remember is the building debt we raised, we had some initial funds, we raised some initial funds. Uh, I think we raised 25% of the cost of the building and then financed the rest through uh, a bank and through personal loans from non, non interest bearing loans to the, from the people in the church to the church to complete the building. And our first goal was to pay off the building uh, loan to the banks, which we did in uh, 2018. And now we're within, I think, less than 40000 of mm -hmm. paying back all the loans to our in-house uh, borrowing that we did. So sometime in the middle of 2020, Lord willing, we'll see that done. And then by the time we get to 2020 budgeting time for 2021, <laughs> I think we'll be able to see some of those things that we talked about. We, we, we took an uptick this year. Um, in terms of missions budgeting, we went up um, a good amount. I like to, that's going to increase, I think, substantially in 2021, which was our goal. And so we have some, we have some people talking about going, um, and some people in this room even are talking about that. And we want to somehow fit all this together in um, our 2020 goal. Um, it's good. It's important to know that we're not just pulling funds out of thin air, um, because it costs it costs money to support things like we're talking about. Our annual budget for our building has been forty thousand um, dollars to pay back our loans. What we what we had talked about was moving that money to our missions efforts or our outreach efforts. Some of our outreach efforts are local, but you know, a good portion of them are foreign. And we've talked about moving that financial support in that direction. So once we get this building paid off, it's not going to be like an added financial burden to the church. It's, we're already doing it. Right. We've been doing it since 2015. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's kind of exciting yeah. Yeah, praise God. to see it's, this is actually happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's exciting to me at least. Yeah, and churches, you think about just the financial part of that and how churches agonize over raising money and getting loans and getting loans paid off and I mean it it challenges the fortitude of a lot of churches to go through that process mm -hmm. um, and yet it's I mean we've been so blessed we've been so blessed the way this has gone and the way um, people People came forward to make no interest loans, which mm -hmm. was great, which you know saved us from a financial perspective, mm -hmm. saved us a lot of money, mm -hmm. but it showed a lot of faithfulness yeah. in a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, 
and and just the whole process of people people have been have have raised their giving up and it's it's a real testimony how God has worked in the hearts of the of the people in the church to do that. Mm-hmm. It's not like we goaded people um, necessarily to give more. And that I think Andy goes back <clears throat> to Jeremy's question about how have we seen God uh, move in the lives of our people. We've never had a year in the red, right? Financially, mm-hmm. and I think that's a little uncommon. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, if we were to go back and answer that question, it would include this: look at the financial faithfulness yeah. that we've seen from people that come to our church. I mean, we've <laughs> maybe this isn't the best thing to say. We've spent a million dollars on our property, and we only owe less than forty thousand. That is amazing, mm-hmm. and we're we just we're, we're meeting budget every year, every month, really, and it's because God is moving people to be faithful, to be obedient, to be sacrificial, to be loving. Mm-hmm. That, that's the work of Christ. That's the work of His Spirit mm-hmm. in our church. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So that goes back to the the question I asked earlier: of How have you seen? God's people growing in, in yeah, that area. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yes. That's what I'm saying. People are faithfully giving. Uh, it's not maybe the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah, people have been giving. That doesn't sound good, sure. but it is evidence sure. of the work of the Spirit. Sure. Well, isn't that ironic? You, you use that million dollar number. Is that, that's a real number. That's a real number. <laughs> and you look at that, and you look at that, and you think, how many years ago you looked at <coughs> purchasing a building that was going to cost a million, a million dollars? Yeah. And it got voted out to do that. Yeah. And yet, We've still come full circle. Yep. Financially. We've still spent the same amount of money. <laughs> well, yeah. But, but the way God has done that. Yeah. Yeah. In that fashion, through real obvious steps of blessing. Here, here's a building. Oh, okay. We'll take the building. Yeah. And just think about how how much glory God has gotten oh, from yeah. that story. Yeah. Right. Sure. That we can promote. Like, look what God did. Like God gave us this building, and. You know, then he gave us money to remodel this building, and he is building people, bringing people to this building, and just, uh, yeah, I know that that's come up, you know, many times, just when you're talking to people and they ask, where do you go to church, and how did that happen, and you just can kind of go through that story of, like, this is the faithfulness of God. Uh, yeah, it's pretty. It's the Ebenezer and, Stones. It's been great. Yeah, for sure. Now, do you remember, Dennis, you probably remember this. We used to tell people when they had asked us, David, you may remember too, but, um, when are we going to get a building? When are we going to get a building? Well, they've asked us that all the time. You know, our answer was, well, as soon as God gives us a building, we'll get a building. <laughs> and he did. And he did. Yeah. He did. Yeah. yeah. Well, God is, God's been faithful to us as a church, hasn't he? And we have, we have plenty of things to be thankful for. Just continue to sing his praises. But what would be some encouragements that you would give to the people of Sun Valley as they as they are looking forward to 2020. If you could give them a word of encouragement, um, what would that be? I think it's really important to be reminded that to be consistent in the fellowship of the body of Christ mm-hmm. is a very key point. Sometimes people um, don't understand that there are benefits of that that are hidden at the time that don't come out until years later and so that just that consistency of no matter what the distractions could be or the disappointments certainly in churches there are disappointments because churches are full of sinners Mm -hmm. but if you keep consistent in the fellowship of the church over time your spiritual life will be healthy and if you don't it won't we don't know what 2020 is going to bring Right? We didn't know what 2019 was going to bring. And it might be uh, a lot easier than this year. might be harder. I don't know. We don't know. But um, in looking forward to what God will do, even though we don't know what that's going to be, um, something that the psalmist often does is, <coughs> and the prophets is they look back. Mm-hmm. And because of what God has done is always uh, a type of what he will do. right? Because God is faithful. He is uh, promise keeping his covenant love never fails and so to anybody who's got trepidation 
um, about the uncertainty of what's going to happen, uh, my encouragement would be, look what God's done. Um, there's been a number of points to rejoice in that's brought up in this conversation. And, and that doesn't even get personal into individual <laughs> you know, situations. And so just for your own family, what, has, what have you seen God do? How has he sustained you? And then keep your eyes open and keep praying and keep reading, keep showing up um, because God's, he's going to do more. So that's encouraging. Yeah, he will. He will complete his work. <coughs> you know, we're now a part of. And so we'll see him work uh, over and over again. That he will remain faithful because he always has. And uh, just remembering that and then remembering to remind each other that of those things, you know, when things are good and when they're hard. So, yeah. I, one of the reasons I chose Philippians is because it's, it's a book written or a letter written by Paul to one of the more healthy churches in Paul's day. Um, and it's just full of positive encouragement. Uh, they were a wonderful church. They were sacrificing. They were serving. They were loving. And Paul, he said, you know, keep doing this. Go more. Do better. And I, that's kind of how I feel about Sun Valley. We have a, I think we have a wonderful church, and I'm so excited, so thankful, so blessed um, because of what God is doing here amongst us. I, I want to, one of the things I want to say from Philippians repeatedly is keep going. Let's not, let's not, you know, take our foot off the gas. Let's just, you know, go for it. He says this in um, verse 20, verse 27 of chapter 1. He says, let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear that you are standing firm in one spirit with me in mind and body, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel. It's like they were already doing it. And he's, and he's saying, come on, <laughs> you know, you, I can get more out of you. Let's go, let's go. And so that's kind of how I feel about it. And that's what my encouragement would be to Sun Valley. Our goal, of course, would be to finish Philippians in one year, in 2020. Um, no guarantees there, but um, there's a good chance, uh, and we'll hear it. And that's that would be my word to our church. God's got bigger and better and greater things for us, so we shouldn't be satisfied with anything. We just oh, we're, we're good. We've, we're all right. Mm -hmm. Well, church, uh, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm incredibly thankful for these men here. Um, they do a lot of work uh, for us, and uh, it's such an honor to work underneath them and uh, serve with them. So uh, thank you again, guys, for, for coming out and, and sharing your wisdom. And so, church, we love you. Uh, we look forward to 2020. And seeing what God has in store for us. We hope you have a wonderful New Year's Eve with friends and family.